Hey friends, it's Akadiris. So I'm currently in the Showa room again. If you guys don't know what this room is, in my last video I displayed that I basically redecorated our tatami room to look like the Showa era of Japan. The Showa era is basically Japan from the late 1920s to the 1980s. So I really like the style of that period, and so I began a project by turning our room to look like that. So if you guys want to see the full tour, I'll link it down below. But in that video, I actually showed a lot of different things that are true vintage, like items that are from that period. So I said in that video that I was going to go test a few of them out on camera, such as the TV behind me, I've got the radio, and there's a few items in here that I didn't really show in that video that I'm going to do in this one. So I'm going to be just displaying some stuff here and hopefully it all works because there's some that I haven't really plugged in because I've been a bit scared to do it. So this is my vintage radio. I bought this from an old woman from a thrift store and she couldn't really pinpoint to me the exact year that it was made, but she did say that it was from the Showa era, so I'll take her word for it. But I was originally gonna get like a vintage styled radio that is modernized so that I could connect it to Bluetooth, but she sold this to me for 9,800 yen and I just thought I, I really had to have it. It does still work, so I'm gonna turn her on and let you guys see how it sounds. Okay, so there are a lot more clearer stations that play legitimate music, but because of YouTube copyright, I don't think I can really play them, but it does work, and when you get to the right station, it's pretty clear. It's not as grainy as what you guys just heard. And you can adjust the tone of it from low to high. You can adjust the volume. You can change it from FM to AM, the loudness and the tuning of the stations. I don't really know what happened here. I guess what you can call the, uh, the dial for tuning. I'm not sure if that's mold or anything, but I've tried to wipe it off and it just won't come off. So if somebody wants to help me out, please comment below of what just happened to my radio. Also, it reminds me of how old Sony is. I have no idea how old this company is. Looking at something that's actually working from the past is pretty cool. So now I'm gonna bring you guys to my vintage television set that I got secondhand from online. It does turn on, but it doesn't broadcast. It's placed right next to my radio and this was sold to me for 4,500 yen. My childhood did not grow up with a TV like this with the dials and everything. I grew up with the late 90s sort of television sets, which is actually the one that's right here. So this one I'm not really too familiar with and I didn't really grow up with my grandma uh, too much so I don't really know if she had anything like this but the dials are heavy like it feels like I'm turning on a stove like listen to this like like it feels like I can feel all of the gears and all of the strings inside struggling to get this dial to move or maybe it was always like that. I guess this is where the speaker is. I'm just guessing for anyone that's older, they're probably like, oh man, it's so sad to see younger people. Look, I'm almost 30, but it's, they're probably like, oh man, younger people don't know how to work a dial TV. Uh, down here, I'm not really sure what these are, but I know that these are the kanji for color. Now, like I said, this doesn't broadcast, but it does turn on. So I'm gonna turn her on and show you guys. I'm not gonna leave her on for too long because it makes a weird sound that makes me really paranoid to leave it on. So here's the plug, it is old. I am so scared <laughs> to turn this on. Uh, I think I just have to pull this little lever out. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so that's that's what it looks like. Very anticlimactic. It reminds me of the ring a little bit, which is why I'm turning that off immediately. That's pretty much the extent of how much it works, but I did see a couple of TVs that surprisingly broadcast. They might've been fixed by someone else, for them to help broadcast actual channels, but I didn't think that we would need something like that. I just kind of wanted a TV just for the aesthetics. So got a pretty good deal on that. Okay, now I'm gonna take you to our next product, this item right here. So this is called a home steam iron, and I got this for, I wanna say almost 2000 yen, but I mainly got it for the packaging because these used to be packaged in wooden boxes and I really liked the sticker on the front and it does have an iron in it, of course. And this is what it looks like. It's really, really heavy. This thing looks like it could brand me really badly. This is the iron that we use today. This is kind of a good 
compare and contrast. This is from the Showa era, and this is your modern day iron here in Japan. And a lot of places in Japan have this, this exact iron because it's really cheap. Uh, and you can just put water in here and it has like a whole bunch of different settings. This one seems to only have an on and off button. So I don't know how hot this gets. I don't know how long it takes to heat something up, but luckily I do have to iron some clothes. So one of the things I do have to iron is Joey's obi belt for his yukata. Okay, I just read the instructions and it says that you can undo this part. And I think that's where you would put water in. But I'm not going to because this thing's really old and it's probably rusty as hell in there. But what I am going to do is try to just use pure heat. So hopefully this thing doesn't burst into flames. I'm going to plug her in and test her out. Okay, so I think this is the switch here and I'm gonna turn her on. I hear it clicking. I think that means it's warming up now. This scares me so much if I make the wrong move. Like, of course, I mean, any iron would make me scared, but does this whole thing get really hot? I don't know. I can kind of feel it getting even warmer now. I don't know how long it's gonna take for this thing to get hot, so I'll see you guys in a bit. Intermission. Okay, it's finally hot. I've been rubbing it onto the mat a little bit and yeah, it's pretty hot now. So, all right, let's try to uh, iron Joey's obi belt and see how easy it can flatten. I'm sure it's really not that complicated. It's an iron. Yeah, so, so far, uh, it's still a little bit wrinkly, especially at the back, but this is really thick material. I mean, the iron works, so I'm gonna just iron the rest of this belt and hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Dude, I would argue that this thing is actually ironing my stuff quicker than our modern one right now. So on a lot of the irons today, you can adjust the heat, but I guess on irons like this, it was just either on or off. And I don't know how hot this is, but I'm just gonna say it's pretty freaking hot. So the reason I don't wanna put water in it is because I just feel like the insides might be really rusty. And if that steam comes up, I'm worried that if it's gonna carry bacteria in the air and it's gonna get in my lungs. So I'm not going to even try. I'm not an expert at science, but that's just what my thoughts say is going to happen. Wow, I kind of almost wanna use this iron for a lot of stuff because it's so hot that it's flattening it legitimately faster than our modern iron right now. I think I remember there used to be like old shows where the mom would be panicking that she left the iron on. I can see why, because this thing gets so fucking hot. I'm just gonna say that this iron is actually starting to get a little hot just to the touch. Okay, I'm just gonna take a break just to tell you guys that when I hold this, if I even like hold it up like this, cause sometimes by habit, my thumb goes over like this. This is really hot. Yeah, I, I can imagine a pretty bad accident happening from these. Okay, so Joey's belt is finally done. It's still kind of wrinkly here at the beginning, but I'm gonna probably have to go over that again. But I think it did justice. I'm glad that it still works. It got really hot, but I got through this in like no time. I have no idea to figure out how hot this thing gets exactly, but I'm just gonna switch her off right now. I'm gonna wait for her to cool down, but Joey's belt's finally flattened and I think it worked out for the best. I'm gonna tell Joey that I ironed his yukata using an iron from the Showa era. Okay, so I have one last product to show you guys and it is this. This is called the Light Hair Dryer Curly One and a Half. It's a weird name, but this is a kit that girls could use to basically do any hairstyle that they wanted at the time. It comes with a hair dryer, it comes with a brush, a curling iron, and on the side, it gives you like a fun little tutorial on how to get bangs that were really popular back in the day. I don't know if the world is ready to see me with this look, but it's unused. So I could technically use this today, but let's just open her up. This is the hair kit. I don't see one strand of hair on this. So this is the main handle that you would attach any of the accents to. And it looks like that it's kind of supposed to be for maybe portable use. The switches are in English. So it has the push button to turn it on and just like the iron, it has only hot or cold. So unlike today's curlers, you can't adjust the heat of this. So this is everything that you can attach to it. So I think this one looks like, I guess a hair dryer. And this one is a comb. This one that is also kind of like a hair comb brush. And this one is the curler. I think I'm gonna go with the curler just to see how it works. I think all you have to do is just attach it on here. 
I have faith in this actually not being used because this doesn't look like it has any signs of being pre-owned other than the fact that it's old. Wait, no, there is one sign. What? I think I caught you in 4K. I see a little bit of hair right here and it's like a long strand of hair. It came out from this brush. I guess I'll just use the curling iron. Plus that seems more fun. I'm expecting this to just get really hot. Okay, so it seems simple enough. All we have to do is just turn her on and put her on hot. Whoa, I forgot. It's a hair dryer. Okay, so because it's a hair dryer, that makes sense because hair dryers are the same way. You can't adjust the temperature on those. You can only basically put them on hot or cold, but let, let's, let's try it on this. Wow, that already got really hot. Okay, I'm gonna try to leave her on a little longer so that it can have time to actually curl my hair. But the product itself, it's really nice and light. It's not like as bulky and as heavy as I thought it was gonna be. And it doesn't say if this is meant for travel, but it's small enough, I think, that you probably could have brought this with you if you were going out somewhere. So it did curl my hair. That's a little too much curl for my taste, but yeah, I mean, it worked. So I can see somebody probably bringing this with them on the go because it is small enough to just pack up. You could bring the whole kit with you and just do your hair there, but oh well. I might have been the first person to actually like properly use this in like 30, 40 years. No, 50 years. You know what I should do for a future video is actually practice the hairstyles that are actually done in that time period using this hair dryer. I will do that. That was everything I want to share for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. It's kind of cool that I have a lot of stuff now from the Showa era that still works in some way, shape or form because you kind of get a window into how things were done back then. Things were just kind of like simple quick just want to get it done and be pretty and that's it so yeah i think that it's kind of cool that i have a lot of this in i guess you could say this is my collection now but i appreciate you guys for watching subscribe to my channel for more content and i will see you guys in the next video bye